Hello, everyone. This is another episode of the Prosthetics and Orthotics Podcast. My name is Joris Peels, and I'm here with Brent Wright. Hi, Brent. How are you doing? Hey, Joris. I am in the jungle of Guatemala, so you're going to hear all kinds of crazy background noise, but I am <laughs> super excited about yeah. this podcast. Okay, perfect. In the jung- Are you really in the jungle, though, Brent? Are you in the jungle jungle, or are you like... You know, kind of in the airport or sitting at a uh, at a Marriott somewhere on the beach. <laughs> it is the jungle jungle. So yes, yeah. it is uh, deep, deep. Uh, lots of insect repellent and gold bond. Okay. 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 <laughs> and and uh, and what's it like? Are you like in a village or a town or what, what kind of place you like? Yeah, so we're in a town called San Benito, which is outside of Flores. And this area, about an hour north of here, is really well known for the Mayan ruins. And so there Mm -hmm. are people that kind of come through here, but um, you can't get very much more jungly. I mean, it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, That might sound romantic to people who have not been in the jungle. (laughs) 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 That might seem adventurous and cool until like just doing anything in the jungle is actually kind of horrendous. (laughs) You got that right. I, uh, I prefer, uh, yeah. So, and we've, we've had a couple like spouts of, of, of no power. So we've had to run generators to do our clinic and such. So it's been, it's been very interesting. Yeah. So, and, and for the people who don't know, like, what are you doing in the, in the middle of nowhere in, in Guatemala? <laughs> Hopefully, a much needed vacation and respite and rest from doing all these prosthetics all the time, right? Oh, yeah. Though no, that's not the case. It's like <laughs> on turbo charge. So we do. We've been doing a clinic in the jungle here for uh, the last sixteen years. We started in two thousand and six, and so uh, we um, really have been investing kind of in this area and local talent. And uh, so we're having a good training session here and we've started the move digitally. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good also segue into uh, welcoming uh, Sissy Schaefer to the show too, because Mm -hmm. she is part of a company that is trying to do that really at a granular level uh, and as part of an ecosystem. So I'm really excited to talk with Sissy and see what they're up to. Yeah. So welcome Sissy. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So, so what Brent, you were talking about well, the company you're, you're at is, is called PVA Med, right? So tell us a little bit about like, well, first, first, let's tell us a little bit about how you got involved in 3D printing in the first place. How'd you end up in uh, our neck of the woods? Sure, sure. My background, I actually spent most of my career in a totally different industry. Uh, commodities trading, very fast paced, you know, new technology, uh, new things all the time. So that's you know, just who I am that I, I get drawn to or I get excited about. So uh, that company got sold in 2017, and I was looking for a new opportunity. And uh, there was a company at the time called Create OMP, uh, started by a clinician, four clinicians, and really who believed in, in a fully integrated 3D printing solution because uh, they really felt that that was the way to kind of get to uh, make people comfortable with 3D printing instead of kind of going out and buying you know, a printer and software and figuring it all out. So that was uh, really intriguing to me. I took the job in 2018 as the CEO for that startup company. And uh, the first thing that I kind of on my mission was to find a new 3D printer because we had had some, the company had some uh, bad experiences with uh, one from um, overseas and one from the West Coast. And uh, we were starting to look just to, to kind of bring it at home, uh, bring it, uh, we were in New York State and we wanted a New York State manufacturer. Um, so I went on a uh, hunt. I had I found five good candidates, and then PVA, my parent company, was one of those candidates, and ended up doing business with them. They designed, redesigned our three D printer, and manufactured here at the facility in upstate New York. So that's sort of how I got into the three D printing industry as a whole. And then uh, about a year or so into us working with PVA, th- this is a privately owned company. It's thirty years old. You know, a, a large. Um, Large company as far as we we have machines, probably, you know, thousands of machines out out in the world. But the owner really wanted to get into the patient care side. And it was a very good fit uh, with Creator P and his company. And he acquired us in 2019. So we have really stayed true to the the core, um, like Brent said, the core business that that started uh, of having an integrated solution. And we still feel that that is the best way to get people comfortable and trained and really adapting 3D printing. So that hasn't changed. What really has changed is, you know, now I have this, you know, uh, you know, 
big company with uh, you know resources and everything else and the support structure and infrastructure that we can now take this and really bring it uh, full force. Okay, so what you guys are selling, actually the product is like, so essentially it's like you have the scanning solution, the software that connects it all together, and then also the printer, right? The whole thing, right? Correct. So when someone comes and buys from us, they will get the entire, you know, the full stack, if you will. So we, right now, uh, the 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 scanner that we find is currently the best one for, for our customers is the Comb Scan. So they mm-hmm. will get uh, an iPhone with a Comb Scan um, Comb app. They get access to our proprietary software that we um, now, after the acquisition, we brought it in-house. So we have software uh, teams on staff here. So we develop it, um, support it here in-house. Um, we Then they get a, the 3D printer that we designed and manufacture also in-house. And then the really big thing is that everything is um, integrated. So what that means, and you guys know 3D printing well enough to, to kind of see the value of this, is the software and the printer have been pre-configured. So there's no nothing to figure out. You know, we kind of take the guesswork out of that. So um, slicing profiles and all that is already integrated into the system, making it you know as easy as possible as we can make it to to get into 3D printing. And then also you get a full uh, onboarding training and then support for the life of the machine. So we are really trying to say, you know, yes, you can go on and buy the pieces separately, but if you if you want to kind of have a solution that works out of the gate and you know have that support behind you, we're here to do that with you. So I mean, we've trained people that had absolutely no 3D printing experience at all. Um, to, you know, some that are very savvy. So that's really where I think we bring the biggest value is is, is making it easy for people to, to get into 3D printing. So first off, I mean, I think for a lot of people, I mean, 3D scanning is really the most difficult part usually, right? And you're doing essentially like an iPhone-based 3D scanner. Is, it, is there... And is that enough for, for like, because otherwise you usually, maybe you need a 5000 or a $50,000 unit a separate 3D scanner, but this seems like it's really cost effective. So it lowers the cost of the packet, but is it good enough? Does it give you the the the, the, the triangles you need, let's say? We've, we've gotten uh, very good feedback. We've done some some internal testing. We've had customers who have done testing. Obviously, any, and that's really, you know, if, if you're going to do anything, in my opinion, get on to start scanning. You know, if, if, if as a first step, start that. So to your point, there's a lot of different scanners out there. For us, we're also trying to keep the cost down. We're trying to make this, you know, accessible to as many people as we can. So that was one of the reasons we chose Comb. Um, we do find that is better than some of the other options that we had previously in, in part of the package. But really, any scanner works with our platform as long as it produces an STL and OBJ file. Okay, okay. So if you have, and- you know, if you have a preference for something else, you know, it's not that you you can't use it with our system. It's just you, you, you know. We mm-hmm. just find that that's for, for the package. That's the best way to go for us. Yeah. And so one of the neat things I think that I'm hearing from them and, and Sissy, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, your solution right now is test sockets. So it's how do you get to a test socket that is consistent that the, the practitioner or the clinician can take care of? And so using a scanner like the, like the comb scanner, um, yes, you may have your tolerance isn't going to be as great as a $50,000 scanner, but it's good enough to get you into a test socket that, that you're then going to modify um, to make the device, but you don't want to stack the tolerances, right? So you don't want to use that, that the scanner multiple times because then you do end up with some variability. You're absolutely right. Uh, and, and that's a very good point to make. So um, our platform, and, and this is kind of might sound counterintuitive, but we actually have taken things out of our platform. So as we've been growing over the last two years and getting more and more customers on, we obviously learn, we always look and see, you know, what works, what doesn't work. And we found that if, if, if we, we pulled out things, we used to have leg covers, we used to have you know other devices in there, different nasal sizes and all that. It, it was actually, we had greater success when we took that out and just said, we are providing a check socket platform. So, you know, that that is exactly why that scanner works so well. And, you know, if you're just doing check sockets, you know, and you, and you buy our solution, you're going to be up and running successfully and get value out of that from, you know, day one. Mm-hmm. So I think it doesn't mean that the printer can't do other things, but this is what we're doing. And that's, you know, it's been working very well for us over the last two years. Yeah, so I think that's interesting. We, we we often in 3D printing have a problem that the machines can be used for so much and they're only valuable for so few things. <laughs> and oftentimes, like any kind of sales cycle, we made really long by trying to identify what part 
when and with what material and getting that to work. So from a business perspective, I love the idea of just saying, it's a test socket machine. This is all that you need to know about test socket by now. And then, yeah. and then that just to me, it just shortens your sales cycles unimaginably, uh, I would expect. Yeah, but both that and I think, you know, we can we can be really good at what we you know what we provide and mm-hmm. you know our training we've you know the training has evolved and you know with the pandemic we used to have customers come into our facility that's part of the package uh that doesn't cost them anything to come in and train for two full days we will go through this is how you scan this is how you bring the scan into the software this is how you do modifications and all of that so with the pandemic we had to come up with an online platform but we we do that virtually now which is mm-hmm. you know again just making it so that it's really really easy and and if we can get our product out there in the marketplace and get people comfortable and show them that it works every time, that you have to use our filament, you have to use the hardened that comes with the machine. And we do get that question, you know, but it can do all these other things, the printer. Yes, it can, but let's get you almost certified to do check sockets so that you get, you know, your money back and, and, you know, then you can take it to, to and do other things once you become you know, digital. So that's mm-hmm. really, you know, that's really my mission right now is just to get as many people on board to 3D print check sockets. Yeah. And and once you do that, is there, do you have a standard kind of ROI calculation or how long I would expect to, you know, what's the investment about yep. and, and, and yeah. Yep. Yep. So we, we kind of find that the average customer does about 10 sockets, check sockets a month. And mm-hmm. if you do that, you're going to, um, your, your return on that investment, you're going to get that paid back. If you do CFEB about nine months, and if you do traditional FEB about a year and a half, and then your savings are between fifteen and thirty thousand dollars a year going forward. Wow! If you if you, if you do ten a month, yes. Okay. So obviously we have customers do a, t- a lot more. I mean, the, the, yeah. The, so when you show that, I mean, it really is. The, the, it makes sense to do it, but it's also very hard. You know, you said sales cycle is shorter, but it's still a lot of convincing people that it's here, it's ready. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and and just give it a try. And it's a lot about educating them, showing them. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone to come here and touch a field of printer. They want to see demos of this software. Just you know, show us, and then you know they're they're on board. Okay, okay, and then okay. So they also know there's a software component, and what does that do? Does that clean up the scan, and then what, what does that the software do? Yeah, so our software is called Rapid Plaster. It's uh, it was designed, and we've we've really stayed true. Again, like I said, stayed true to that original business model, and to keep things simple. So it will do you know what you need to do. You know, plank cut. You know. Um, buildups, all, all the tools that you kind of use in, in traditional fabrication, but it's for check sockets. We're trying to not throw other things in there. So it's uh, it's very intuitive, very easy to, to learn. And again, we, we're trying to, to reduce that learning curve to make it easy to, to, to use. Okay. And you also, you said, you mentioned that you, you also sell the material, right? No, what material is that then? So we have a, um, tested and we have a patchy ba- based uh, material. We call it, it's a uh, clear fit. Mm-hmm. So what we have, and the other thing that I'm going to mention too, that's been a real enabler for us the last year, we came up with a new design called the Walk Strong Check Socket. And a lot of people were hesitant to 3D print check sockets because they're afraid it's going to break, especially at the distal end when you go from, you know, the, the straight printing up into, you know, when you start to, to the overhangs into the actual mm-hmm. socket. So these have uh, reinforcement ribs and our, our engineers put them in the system again Nothing has to be figured out by the customer. So they just go to a drop down menu and our software say, all right, um, the, the, at this point, the socket is X, you know, circumference. And they know exactly what size to pick to get the most optimal strength out of those reinforcement ribs. And then they print with those ribs and it just creates that extra strength. And then we also made the, mm-hmm. the socket a little bit thicker uh, because we can go one pass. And again, the, the, when you do the one pass print versus, you know, two, it just bonds better and it becomes more clear and stronger. So I think, I think showing people that it's ready, showing people that has also gotten some people over the hump and said, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it, I want to do this now. So I think it's been kind of a, a you know, a, a, we've looked at it, you know, many different ways. And I think we feel that it's ready. And that was just, you know, getting people more to, to see mm-hmm. that it really is. Ready. And, and of course, like I think Brent mentioned this before, so I mean, you want a clear socket so you can see what you're doing and to adjust it, right? Okay. Okay. And then, and then, yeah. Correct. But then, is it clear enough? Because it is a bit of a with, with material extrusion or FDM or FFF, what you want to call it. Uh, uh, the yeah, making completely clear things is kind of difficult. Still, it's going to be a little bit opaque, right? 
Uh, yeah, it's it, it's you know it's not as clear as a traditional pull check socket, but what we're well, you know the feedback that we're getting from customers mm-hmm. is that it's mm-hmm. it's clear mm-hmm. enough. So, and you know we've we've also picked you know the layer height. We picked up you know 0.5 millimeter layer height again just to to get it to be as strong, but you know to not uh, to be clear as well. So it's it's a give and take. I mean nothing's going to be you know perfect there there's you know there's uh, pros and cons to everything but uh, yep that we perfect. do hear that and it's then clear so the, and a little bit more about the printer because like, like the, this is this is called the the carver pro s right or uh, yeah right yeah nope that's oh, actually okay. a carver i can talk about that later so that's something else that we that we uh, are introducing you know, the, the printer that we oh, okay, uh, sell sorry, is sorry. the yeah. emergence pro so the, tell us a little bit about the emergence yeah. pro then what's what, what's up so the emergence pro was designed in-house here and it's uh we kind of picked the size based on the build volume. We felt that if we did it, the, so the build volume is 25 inches tall, 19 by 13, um, that it fits most mm-hmm. AKs and BK sockets. Uh, it's an FDM printer. It's a very heavy duty, you know, built like our other machines. Um, we have a, a Bontech extruder. Nice. Um, like I said, it's just, yep. So it's, uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's meant to last. It's meant to, you know, to, 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 to be in, in, in someone's clinic for a long time. Uh, so it's definitely you know, heavier duty. You know, it, it weighs probably 350 pounds. So it's not something that you just no. kind of pick up and put on your desk. It's, you know, it's rolled in. Uh, we, you know, it's got to be leveled. And then, you know, you can you can kind of run on it, you know, as much as I you think, want. I think one of the issues, I think, for a lot of people to have printers is, well, first of all, build volume. So that, that's good that you have a... Uh, larger uh, printer than the mouse, but also like there's there's like stoppages, like nozzle problems and things like that with FDM. Do, do you have it like you know? Is it easy to maintain as well? Because that's that's another problem with 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 printers for 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 non printing people, if you will. Right. No. No. You're absolutely right. So we again we uh, the the nozzle that comes with our system is also uh, designed to work well with the Walkstrong socket and with the machine. Uh, but we, we know questions come up there, you know, uh, things get clogged, things, you know, you have to do certain maintenance on them. So that's kind of where our service team comes in. So, you know, you can, you can get a hold of us anytime and, uh, you know, walk through and to, to get help with a printer because there will be, you know, especially if you run it a lot and then, you know, there might be some replacement parts. I think Joris, one of the interesting things about what they do is she, and, and Sissy, you'll have to let me know how wide you extrude, but they extrude in vase mode. So mm-hmm. they're putting down these massive layers of filament to get these things strong. So, uh, Sissy, how, how wide is that uh, yep. pass usually? Yep. So we it's actually very precise, again, because we do have the slicing profiles built into our software. So we went back and forth and had a lot of uh, beta testers kind of give us feedback on what would be the two optimal sizes. So it's the same. So our nozzle is 1.5 millimeter nozzle, but it actually... Uh, we use that for both thicknesses, and it's either a three millimeter or a four millimeter thickness. Oh wow! Yeah. So you guys are really uh, <laughs> yep. putting down yep. some and plastic. That's great. Correct, and 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 it is in a you know one pass. So that's that's where all the tinker. I mean, mm-hmm. this took us a while, you know, and you know, we we got a mm-hmm. whole building full of engineers, right? And and but it was a lot of testing to what is that optimal layer height, you know, nozzle and size, what's, material, and what's thickness, layer all that stuff. So you know. Uh, 0.5. Mm-hmm. And then, do you notice layer? then that the, 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 you get better layer adhesion because the uh, the ensuing layer is heavier? Or, or? Uh, absolutely. So we used to have a two mm-hmm. pass four millimeter that was definitely not as strong as the one pass. So whenever you do it, you know a pass, there's always that chance mm-hmm. that you know it separates. So by having it one pass, um, so most and you know it's totally up to you know we, we don't recommend or you know anything, but most of our customers do not. Uh, mm-hmm. Fiberglass reinforce those sockets. They actually walk, uh, do dynamic and static fittings without reinforcing them. So, yeah, it's uh, it's. I, I think, I think that is probably going to be the you know the thing that that makes mm-hmm. people comfortable. I think. Well, you know? well, I think. I think it's so. interesting because like. By doing that, you and and also this is like a spiralizer, or like Brent said, a vase pattern. So that's it's also the best for for like specifically for socket. It's wonder it's a wonderful shape, right? It's like we would love this as a shape. It's like it's like the right. ideal thing. Give me this stuff all right. day. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's it's like ideal. And um, right. so, uh, but the, and so, how long would it take to print one socket then? I oh, would say like an average BK is about three hours, an average AK okay, you know okay. five or six. Like, 
It might be a little bit longer than other uh, printers, but um, we really found that that's sort of it, it without sacrificing quality. We think that that's the fastest okay, you know, right and, now that we can do. And and when nobody's opened a service doing this for other people, because that would be my first thing. If you can, you know, if you use it, if most people use it ten times a month or something. And then I, and I take, I can do it yeah. in six, seven hours or something with a turnaround. Then, you know, there could be people doing this as a service, right? I mean, yep, we have actually uh, recently. Um, some people have asked, you know, could, could we do this? And you know, could we then? Would you supply rapid plaster to those customers that they can, you know, use your platform without having a printer? So it's something that we're exploring. Mm-hmm. Again, we just want to. We want to make this accessible, you know, so that more people can take advantage and, of and this. And what's the investment technology. kind of like uh, around, you know what I mean, or ballpark? Yeah. Yep. So um, uh, we sell our platform. It's uh, just over 20000 It's delivered. Uh, mm-hmm. okay. it's and only shipping. in the States right now, right? So. Yeah. You as in Canada for now. We do have some some uh, older machines out, you know, in, in different areas of the world. But for okay. now, we're focused And who's on like the America. customer for this? Is it like any clinician or any or do you have a typical customer that you'd you'd want to get to with this um if you if i had to say you know if anyone who does 10 or more check sockets you know it just the business case just makes you know you know total sense but if i look at our customer base it it really ranges so we have you know the solo practitioner who uh, is starting something new and they just want to be all digital to a solo practitioner who's been in the business for a long time they want to you know invest in technology to, uh, you know, multi-generational, multi-location uh, facilities that, you know, it really, it really varies. And it's just a matter of the, the you know, the, the clinics, you know, up till now it's been the, you know, sort of the clinics that are a little bit um, forward thinking. Now we're getting, getting to a little bit more mainstream. So I think, you know, we're seeing larger clinics, um, even older, you know, uh, practitioners are adopting to the technology. So it's really, it's really a mm-hmm. wide range Sissy, do you do you see anybody? I mean, would you say, like, if you're if you're doing your, uh, I don't know, like the screening, essentially, who who would not be a candidate for somebody to three D print or buy one of your machines? Good question, Brent. Um, I mean, if if you really really you know small, if you know yeah. if. Um, I mean, if you have a really have, you know, a population that would not fit into that, you wouldn't feel comfortable in a 3D printed check sock. You know, it, it, I, I mean, there's very little testing going on. Uh, if I asked my the customers, they would probably say that they would feel comfortable up to 250 pounds. But again, it's if, if someone's not there yet, if they don't. Yeah. I mean, to me, I, I'm not a salesperson. I don't come from a sales background, but I I really believe that this is the way to go. And, you know, even if it supplements what you do, even if it, you know, some you hear that they can't find plaster, they can't hire people. Well, this is another way to increase your capacity. So people look at it different ways. I mean, they buy for a different reason. But I mean, I think I think it's such a, an amazing tool to add to your practice. No, I think that's a really good point as far as that. I mean, it sounds like really everybody is a candidate, right? As long as you're open minded enough to say, hey, this this tool may help me in my practice. Um, that sounds like really everybody would benefit from having some sort of additive technology scanning, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, having an all in one solution is a pretty, uh, interesting proposition, I guess, for, for those people that are really even on the, on the fence or not even looking, uh, they might not even know that a full solution is available. Right, right. I mean, I, and I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it's it's in in the early when I first kind of came on, it was a lot of uh, I got a lot of pushback. You know, it, almost a threat. Right? It's you know I, I can do it with my hands and I can do it better. And, and I kept saying it's not it's not it's a tool. It's a tool like anything else. Uh, you can still you know you can still cast like you normally would and use your hands and then scan over that if that's you. There's so many different paths. Um, and we say that this is a tool that you can then you, you know put into your workflow and everybody's workflow look a little different. Right. So we have customers who come to us and say, oh, this is great. You know, I'm, I'm on board and now I have the scan. Now, what do I do with it? You know, how do I get to a definitive socket now? And that's when we talk to other companies in our industry, even like you, Brent. How do we collaborate to say, OK, now that you're on board, I see our role is getting people on board because we have this infrastructure and this this you know training capabilities, all this to get people on board. 
And now we got to give them, you know, what can they do now, right? So they can send it to a, an HP and, and get a 3D printed definitive socket, or they can do other things with that. So um, I think as, as, as an industry, if we collaborate too and give people different paths, I think that's, that's an even better, you know, situation for everyone. George, how many times do we hear that? Yeah. You know, collaborate with other companies, you know, typically, Everybody wants to kind of yeah. keep it to themselves. No, I thought, I thought so it was really cool refreshing that? that you would actually mention another like three printing technology company and like be like, eh, that could work, you know? No, no, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of where where we were looking to when we when we mm-hmm, decided mm-hmm. to design the Carver. So some people may be. This is what we're finding. Some are are comfortable three D printing check sockets, but they are not there yet with three D printed definitives. But now they have this digital solution in house. So you know, what can they do with it? So you know, I have the luxury of having, you know, this, you know, group of people who then took that and said, okay, how do we design a carver that's again, affordable. And it actually, it, the, the footprint, it sort of fits in through a door into any clinic and just plugs into the wall. And it's just another tool that they can then say, well, if I'm not quite ready for 3d printed definitives, at least I can kind of bring it in house and do it, you know, the tr- go back to the traditional way, or maybe I can get into someone who buys a carver gets to know us and then, you know, be more comfortable going into 3D printing. So I think it, there's so many different ways to look at it. And, and really, if we can just, if, if, if I, you know, if, if PVM Med can be the, the provider of, of uh, tools, I mean, that's really how I look at our company and, and, and you know, wrap that into the training mm-hmm. to get people up. And Carver and then what materials is that what you usually work, for, work with then? Yeah. yeah. The Carver? It's uh, just the regular foam, and again, it's a we, we're launching it as a uh, as a uh, lower extremity uh, carver. That doesn't mean it's you know can do other things, but it's pre configured, and that's kind of the our whole model. So whatever we launch, because we will launch other things kind of down the road, but we really believe that having that integrated solution is is the way to go for us, and uh, so that we you know the the carver is fully integrated for for AK and BK sockets. It's you know this. It comes with a, a desk proto, which is another uh, software. Uh, so that is what translates the file into a carvable file. And uh, that's already been pre-configured by us so mm-hmm. that it just works out of the game. And then, so, and let's talk a little bit more about this, like, this final socket printing thing. So, like, um, why are these people uncomfortable with it? Is it just a strength issue? Is it, is it, what's the, what's the, the, the pushback there? I am sure Brent can, can, uh, pitch on it or you know on this too but my my take is yes they're not they're not comfortable with you know sending someone home you know definitive you know, on a 3d printed check socket and they're just it, yeah it's, it's almost like they're not there yet um and i don't i don't know i don't know if ftm i think that's going to be quite a while for people to be comfortable and that's all about testing materials and 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 really doing some some strength mm-hmm. test i mean i know a lot of people who who get definitives from an HP printer and very, very happy with it. And, you know, so I, it's, it's, yeah, Brent, what do you think? I mean, it's, it's, I think it's just educating and getting them comfortable with it. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a couple things. And I think what's neat about what you guys are doing is you're providing a software and an avenue to get the shapes. Yeah. That's yeah. really the bottom line is, is people just need to be able to get the shapes and get that fit right through the test socket. And then from there, you're looking at, okay, how do we get, uh, you know, if a clinician modifies a check socket or something, how do we get that to, uh, to scanned? And then how do we get that to print? And that's where I think some centralized design, that sort of thing where somebody can put it on a HP multi-jet fusion printer. But I mean, our uh, sissy, as you, as you're coming in, like, so you've been in our industry for about four years, and I can say this because I've been it for a long time. But we're a goofy industry, right? <laughs> I mean, it's it's and, and Joris Joris is outside of orthotics and prosthetics, and 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 this is part of why we have this podcast is exploring, you know, options. But I think part of it is trying to understand our industry, and. Um, uh, so what are, what are some things, and I don't want to say quirks, but that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are some things that are surprising for you? Like only being in the industry for four years, it's so, it's so valuable and refreshing to hear like your opinion and Joris's opinion on, Hey, why not this? And, um, you know, and kind of coming up with a, a solution on how to reach, you know, my fellow clinicians essentially. Yeah. 
Right. And I mean, I think the biggest thing that struck me, you know, coming into this is, is this, the hesitance of trying something new, you know, and, you know, I, I've done it this way. It works. Why make a change? And that has been a lot of, on, you know, just outreach. I mean, you do it all the time. I, I mean, I follow you on LinkedIn and it's just talking about it. It's here, you know, it's in other industries, in the dental industry. It's in, you know, it's just, a, I think as a whole, the industry is just a little slow to, to adapt to new technology. And maybe it's fear. I, I you know, I, that's sort of, but it's changed. It's been a huge shift, I feel, in the last six months. Even, you know, going into AOPA in September in Boston, it was, instead of people coming up to our booth, you know, saying, yeah, we know about 3D printing. We know it's kind of here, but yeah, I'm not ready to. I know I got to make a change. Tell me about your product. It was a, it was a mind. It was mm-hmm. there was a shift. So I think I think we're getting closer. And I think the more we talk about it, the more we show people that it's here. Uh, I think it, it, it's just slower, a, a longer, you know, a, a longer adoption curve. Or, mm-hmm. You know, I think more than anything. Is, is, is the, and the and how do you see then? Seen. Well, okay. The one weird thing I saw was that there basically there's a bunch of people that are doing basically some engineering stuff, and they don't use the same tools that the same engineer in a different industry would use. So, like in terms of software or in terms of things, it's like they're 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 approaching it in a very different way. So I, I was like really sh- kind of shaken by that actually. That it was like, but why don't you use like FEA, like finite anal- element analysis software, or why don't you use like other stuff that we were finding in other industries. And I thought, as it really is, it's very, very own thing. It's a, the, 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 this industry is very, very quirky, I guess. Yeah. It's very, very di- different than, than other things. What do you think, Brian? I mean, you've been, a, like, what, how, do, how do you, how would you describe? No, I, I mean, I think the change is difficult. I think the one thing, and I, and you can speak to this <laughs> because you kind of reach, you know, reach out to more people, but, uh, it's it's somebody that's invested, say, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into a traditional fabrication lab. And then you come in and say, hey, my solution for that's twenty thousand dollars could actually almost take care of your whole lab. That's a pretty hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. Um, and and I know we can say, hey, traditional fab, you know, is important and all that stuff. And it is. But the reality is, and and for me, you know, I worked out of a uh, transit van, essentially, that had equipment in the back, and I had a 600 square foot office, and I had one of probably the highest producing offices in the whole state of North Carolina, probably on the East Coast. And then when you look at, you know, how, how I did that, it's because of 3D printing. Uh, you know, you yeah. don't have to have all that. But that's that's mind blowing and and. I think a turn off to a lot of people, but it's coming. <laughs> it's yeah. coming. And so that to me, that's been the biggest surprise to me is um, I just invested this much time, uh, this much money in a lab. I've got to use it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I can see that, but as you're mentioning a return on investment on one machine, if you're a fairly busy practice is, is uh, you know thirty thousand dollars a year, or savings of thirty thousand dollars a year yeah. or more? Yeah. Um, that that five hundred thousand dollars that you dropped into the traditional fab almost starts paying for itself if you put one machine in there. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's and how do you see the future evolving, Cecilia? I mean, what do you what do you see happening? So you're 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 convinced it's now is now is the time for uh, additive or three D printing and in, in orthotics and prosthetics. And how do you see this happening? I, again, I, I get. I I think I think the words out, and I I I think. I mean, we're we're seeing an you know an incredible increase in our sales and getting you know these systems out. And I, if people can just find us, you know, and I'm not saying we're the only one. There's other companies out there. Some 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 you know very tech savvy can go out and and, and do this on their own. But if you're not one of them and you want to get into it, you know, it there is a solution to to you know to make it easy to to start 3D printing. It, it's it's going to take some time, but I it's just about awareness, education, telling people that it's ready. And I think the other big the other big fear that I didn't mention, you know, if someone buys a three D printed, they need to know that it's going to work all the time because they're putting all their not you know not all their eggs in the basket, but they need to know that it's going to work all the time. And I think that's been another fear. Well, what if you know the three D printers? I hear they're not you know they're they're going to break down. They're all the stuff. So 
you, you got to partner with someone that you know you're going to get the support. I mean, that's that's and that's what what makes it exciting for me, you know, to to be there. And I think if we do our job right, meaning PVA Med, if we can do our job right and get the system out there, other things will follow. That that's sort of you know my mission. That's mm-hmm. that's where how I look. And at you it. see, like, and and so. You're also like you, you kind of hinted at you, you're making more different machines and stuff like that. Do, do you see this as like, but on the other hand, you see this as like an integrated solution that could play well with other tools, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's you know, I've always sort of looked at when I came onto PVA um, and seeing what PVA does. PVA does we provide automation solutions to you know to a wide variety of industries, and I always kind of looked at PVA Med the same way. I think 3D printing is phenomenal for check sockets. I think it's going to, I think it's the future. I think we're going to do definitive sockets, you know, on 3D printing um, printers down the road, but there's other things that, you know, we, we as an automation company can provide. So I, you know, the car is one example and there may be other machines that we provide just to add to the workflow, add to, you know, to, to bring, you know, mm-hmm. an automation solution. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that's going to be. We have some things in the works, but um, the car is definitely the first step to kind of, looking at you know what we are good at and and providing mm-hmm. the industry with and you the think tools. It like and, and how optimistic are you about like your own success do you want to sell like hundreds of these things dozens of them thousands of them what's what's the what's the plan oh d- definitely hundreds mm-hmm. hundreds of 3d printers um same with the carvers i think I and mean, it's not a huge industry but i think but I mean, we have co- we have some customers who have multiple printers you know because their volume is that high or they place them in different locations and you know make their workflow so um, you know, I, I, I see the benefits that, that people get from 3d printing. Um, so obviously I want other people to get the same, same. Okay. And, and so now it's test it. sockets. And then, and what do you think is the next step for you? If you're going to like, you know, uh, do some more custom settings and, 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 and enable this for more different parts. So it's like, what are you focusing on then? I think the next one for us, uh, the, the natural step for mm-hmm. us would be flexible inner sockets. So it's something that we have uh, done some testing on. And again, when the time comes for us to launch it, it would, it would be, we, we would still do that integrated solution. So it would almost mm-hmm. be a, you know, a package um, where we have figured out this is the material you're going to use. This is the hot end. This is um, here are the slicing settings in the software again, to make it easy. So that's, that's quite, you know, a little bit quite out. We have beta testers who will test and we will go through our internal testing to make sure that it you know, meets our standards. But I would, uh, I would think, and then, you know, some other devices, just because we are also a materials company, so there may be other things that we can, you know, print that's not traditional, like, you okay. know, a filament. Well, Sissy, I think, I think it sounds like you have a very optimistic future for yourself and then the, 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 your company. Uh, it's just really great to, to, to see you, you know, march on onward uh, to, to, to really uh, conquer these new markets. Well, thanks. It's, uh, it's exciting times. It really, it really, you know, it's been, been some, uh, a lot of work over the last four years, but I really feel like it's it's starting to move, and it's it's a it's a fun industry to be part of, and you know I'm lucky to have a good you know what I believe is a very good product, and hopefully we can collaborate more with you know people like you guys and and uh, bringing more value to anyone who yeah, buys our definitely. system. And yeah, Brent, thank you for for being here as well. I hope uh, you don't get stung by too many things out there in Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. And this, this has been great and uh, eye opening. And, you know, I appreciate Sissy coming on and uh, I know you're a kind of a champion for the technology as well. So I know you have to wear your PVA hat, but uh, being a champion for the technology is pretty, pretty neat, pretty unique and inspiring. So thank you so much for continuing to do that. Perfect. Oh, and pleasure. thank you for listening. Uh, this is another episode of the prosthetics and orthotics podcast with Brent Wright and Joris Peels. And this time we're joined by Sissy Schaefer. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.